Hi, I'm Marcus with the IndieMusicLab.com. So over the past couple months, one of my more popular videos was the video entitled Produce an Indie Rock Song, A Five Step Guide. Now in that one, we focused on the more mellow Phoebe Bridger style of indie rock. Well, in today's video, thanks to requests from you guys, we're going to take a look at the other side of that spectrum where indie rock bands like The Strokes, Pavement, and Sonic Youth live. So let's jump right in. Here are the four steps to achieving an aggressive, indie rock production. Now to demonstrate these four steps, I'm going to be walking you through a little remake that I did of the song Last Night by The Strokes. So that sounds like this. We'll get into the rest of the song as we just continue to walk through this video. So let's jump into the four steps. Step number one in this process is left, center, right, electric guitar arrangement. So what I'm talking about here is the panning and spreading out multiple guitars across the stereo field. So one on the left, one in the center, one on the right. And that's exactly what we have here. So it's these three tracks are, are our electric guitar tracks. Now, when the song starts in the intro, there's just one guitar down the middle. That's the one in the center. And then here, you've got the left and the right coming in. There's the left one. There's the right one. Center, left, right. Let me play them all together. That's what it sounds like. And then as you can see here, arrangement wise, as soon as you get out of the intro and that lead vocal comes in, the lead vocal obviously is down the middle of the stereo field, right? It's panned in the center, which means you don't really need this center electric guitar to be there anymore. So that's why you only have this guitar in the center during the intro. And then as soon as the vocal comes in, it's like it replaces the need for that electric guitar. And then you end up with Vocal down the middle, left and right guitars. Also notice the um, how the left and the right guitars aren't exactly playing like doubles of the exact same part. They're playing different things. They're playing off of each other. They're kind of playing counter to each other. And uh, this can be a tricky thing to get right because you don't want them to be too distracting or too offset to the point where you feel like you're going from left to right and you don't really know what to focus on or it's like one is distracting from the other and all of that. So that can be a tough thing to get right, but this is why we practice. This, this is why we get good at, you know, all the various little details that make up the production process. So um, yeah, that is what's happening there. Left, center, right. Now, as far as the processing, I'm not gonna go into the weeds on all of this because it's a very basic sort of thing here. I just, on all three of these, I used GTR tool rack, started with the preset, you know, that had some slight drive on it. And then I went from there. Uh, you know, I added some color here and there uh, to add a bit of that saturation, a little bit of EQ as I needed it, a little bit of tri-comp, which is like the Studio One's version of an OTT. So if you've ever used OTT, uh, this is like Studio One's built-in version of that. And it sounds great to add that extra bit of sparkle. So, and that's basically it. You're playing around with saturations, distortion, um, maybe some uh, harmonic exciters like a sausage fattener where you can add that bit of color on the top end as I, as I have here and so on. And then again, down the middle, whoops, <laughs> put that back to its rightful place. One on the left, one on the right. It's the left, center, right, electric guitar arrangement. And that is the first step. Electric guitar is so important uh, for this aggressive indie rock sound. You gotta get electric guitar right. And this is a great place to start. Just focus on left, center, right, you know, dial those in. And then you generally don't have to add more than that. Because of the nature of electric guitars, how even a little bit of drive and then you stack or you layer them together with multiple tracks, two or three, you get such a wall of sound just by doing that. So you don't need to layer, you know, five, 10 electric guitar tracks to get a huge sound. You just need two or three. And that's exactly what we have going here. All 
right, step number two for producing an aggressive indie rock song is you want a loose acoustic drum groove. Now, when I say acoustic drum groove, of course, I'm cheating a little bit. As you can see here, I'm using Addictive Drums by Excellent Audio, but it sounds pretty realistic. It sounds pretty good. So let's solo the drums and let's see what we are working with here. Let's come over here. Now, as you can see here, I've recorded these across multiple tracks, but these are still all, as you can see in the mix window, it's still all being, it's all stems from just one instance of addictive drums. I did this that way I could record in the different parts without having to do everything at once since I'm not the greatest drummer in the world. So I make it work. Uh, I do what I can, uh, but I started with the kick and the snare. Let me uh, do that. And then I added these little kicks in. One quick tip when it comes to these types of things is notice how what you're expecting this kick to do is be on the and uh, right? One and two and three and four and. And it's almost there, but as you can see here, it's quite off. It's more like it's on the edge. It's more vulnerable, if you will. Listen, right? it has a bit of a hitch quality to it. And, but it sounds cool and it helps give this groove just that sense of, of edge and just that little bit of, like I said, vulnerability so that it's not just the same old boom, ka, boom, ka, you know, with no movement and no kind of push, pull elements to it. Right? It's cool. And then after that, I just got a little closed hi-hat that then moves to an open hi-hat as we go here into the, into the chorus. And then here, just straight up cymbals. So super basic, right? You don't have to get everything right in one take. So whether you're recording it on a pad like this or on the keyboard, or if you're pulling in or starting with a loop that's inside of one of these pieces of software, like you can browse through the beats that they have and you can start there. That's a perfectly reasonable way to go about it as well. Um, just be sure that you don't make it too quantized. Don't make it too tight. Don't make it too robotic. You want to keep that life as you can see here you know, these, these hits, they're off the grid. They're not quantized to the grid because that would be counterproductive for what we're aiming for. We want something that has some life and some looseness to it. And then real quick, as far as some additional processing on this, I threw RC20 on here, which is also made by Excellent Audio. I went with the Vinyl 3 preset. I may have made some slight adjustments. So here's what that sounds like. And there's without it, there's with it. Warms it up, I, you know, it added a, a nice little vinyl flair to it. RC20 is fantastic. And then after that, I put sausage fattener on to add some bit of crispiness because the RC20 kind of warmed it up a bit too much. So then to bring some of that crispiness back, I turned on the color knob uh, here in sausage fattener. And then just a little bit of compression on that drum bus to make it pop through and I just glue everything together even more. So that is what we're doing with the drums. That is step number two, create a loose acoustic drum groove. All right, step number three for getting that aggressive indie rock sound is a very non-aggressive step, and that is use a basic guitar sound. See what it did there? Just the most basic bass guitar tone. I mean, listen to what's listen to what's going on here. I just use my Fender Jazz bass. DI, and then I put uh, this GTR amp here from Waves on it. I went with the Super Tube uh, just to give it a nice bassy tone. And then I threw some saturation and distortion and stuff, just some extra stuff on it to give it that extra bite and color and uh, just to help it fit in the mix better. And as you can hear, the saturation here is really popping through. Without it, 
it's just kind of basic. A saturation really adds that nice grit to it. So especially if you're going for an indie rock kind of aggressive sound, try to add, this is a free plugin, so go download this and go get this if you don't have it and really crank it and it can add that extra bit of crunch and bite to especially a bass guitar. And finally, step number four for getting an aggressive indie rock production is you need a saturated lead vocal. Now, I focused in on saturated specifically because let me show you what this vocal is going to sound like if we just kind of go with the easy stuff, the compression, or not necessarily easy, but I just mean the more, the plugins that add a more mellow um, effect to it, like EQ and compression, right? And let, let's turn off all of the, anything that adds distortion or saturation. Here's what it sounds like. Now it sounds fine. And there is a little bit of, a, of an analog flair to it because I do have, you know, the fat channel EQ on it, whatever. But listen to what happens when we turn on the saturations and the distortions that I added to this lead vocal. Your they can't understand. Your grandsons, they won't understand. And on top of this, I ain't never gonna understand. Huge. It adds that grit, that bite to it. You need that if you're going for aggressive indie rock, especially when you have that wall of sound with the guitars. You need um, this type of saturated processing on a vocal so that it can really cut through the mix and be heard. So real quick, let's walk through kind of what is in this chain on this lead vocal here. So the first thing is a de -esser. Now this is just uh, a de preset using a compressor plugin because de is just a form of compression. 15 minutes now. So we're doing just uh, some de there. Uh, let me go one by one here. And then I've got my, what I call my three-step compression system which is the balance compressor, the glue compressor, and the punch compressor. Now, if you wanna learn more about this, be sure to download my Indie Vocals Compression Guide. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna dive a little deeper into how exactly I compress my vocals. It's really gonna help you out um, to get some clarity on that, specifically on compression. So, the next plugin here is just a little bit of EQ, just to make it fit in the mix, low, mid, cut, 1K, 2K, kind of the nasal frequencies, cut those out, and we're good to go. And then we add the distortion. This is the part where you just really have to play around. Any distortions or saturations that you have, uh, any plugins you got, throw it, throw it on the vocal, see if it sticks. If it don't, try something else. And then we've got saturation knob as well. Um, and then we've got Sausage Fattener, which is another version of a saturation, except I just used a little bit of the color knob. So this adds a bit of sparkle on the top end. And then finally, I needed even more sparkle on the top end. So I went with the Vintage EQ using the fat channel here, and I boosted it about two and a half dB using the high cut shelf. So it's the shelf kind of that looks like this at the top. So it's kind of boosting everything from around 5K and up. And then uh, also do have a little cut here around 220 um, because it was getting a bit too muddied with the bass and the drums and the guitars that were there. So I wanted to make a little bit more room for those elements in the low end. And then finally, um, there's no reverb on this track, by the way. I didn't use any reverb. All I used are a couple very subtle delays. The one is a slap delay. And that sounds like this. Baby, I feel so down and I don't know why. So this is just Valhalla Delay. I've got this set up on a return track, as you can see, also known as an effects channel in Studio One. And that's why the mix is at 100%. And left and right, slightly offset, just a basic slap delay. And then uh, I'm sending just a little bit of the vocal to it. It's very subtle, like it could actually go without it. I keep walking for miles. People, they don't understand. It adds just that subtle amount of space that helps give it just I know the word vibe is completely overused but it, it kind of accentuates the vibe of the song uh, in a way that I like 
So, uh, and then one more thing that I did when it comes to delay is I added a ping pong delay. Your girlfriend, you they hear. can't understand. Your grandson. And this is just another, so I started with the Valhalla delay preset, uh, duck pong. And uh, this is cool because it's, it ducks it within the plugin itself. It ducks the delay signal whenever the lead vocal is singing so that it they don't really run in, run into each other. And then it ping pongs from the left to the right because it's in the ping pong style setting here. So a slap delay, an extra little delay to give the vocal some extra space. And then also did send the electric guitars, the left and the right electric guitars to the slap delay as well. But again, it's very subtle. It's very minimal. We're not trying to create a washy, reverbic, like ambient sound. You want to keep, generally speaking, you want this aggressive indie rock sound to be mostly dry. You don't need much space. And again, I'm not using any reverb at all. I'm just using a slap delay and a slight amount of ping pong delay on the lead vocal. So my friend, that is how you create an aggressive indie rock song. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play this song from start to finish, or at least the part of the song that I remade. Before I do that though, once again, I wanna let you know that you can download my indie vocals compression guide. If you've been struggling to, you know, be clear and get a good understanding of how to actually compress your vocals in a reliable, consistent and effective way, then be sure to download this. It's really going to help you. Um, and it's 100% free. I'll leave a link in the description. It is the Indie Vocals Compression Guide. All right, that is it for today's video. I'm going to play this song from start to finish. This has been the four steps for producing an aggressive indie rock song. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Have a great rest of your day.